Now let's switch to the cavity model. The cavity model was introduced by Lowe and few uh, other uh, authors and some other authors uh, back in 1978 and it models the patch antenna as a lossy resonant cavity. The advantage of this model are it is applicable to rectangular, circular, ellipse and triangular patch antenna, patch shapes, which is an extension to the uh, rectangular shape which uh, we have uh, uh, seen in the transmission line model. It accounts for higher order modes. Uh, it accounts for the feed inductance, depending, of course, if it is a coaxial probe or a, a, a aperture coupled uh, a feeding probe and so on. And uh, it provides some physical insight into the antenna operation uh, because it gives uh, higher order modes that can uh, also propagate in the cavity domain of the patch antenna and can be used for some other applications as well. Its drawbacks are it assumes subtle thickness again uh, uh, where H is much much less than the wavelengths to avoid surface wave excitation and it is unable to analyze multi-layer patch antenna elements, as uh, I mentioned before, like stack patches. Here we actually see the patch antenna, and uh, the patch antenna can be considered as a cavity with two uh, conductive walls on top and on the bottom, and four magnetic walls on the edges of the uh, microstrip antenna. We can see the magnetic walls here and here in the, this cross section, the feeding point of the patch, and actually what we are solving by the cavity model, the fields that can be uh, ex existing or excited in this cavity, which is, uh, uh, has the dimension of W, L, and H. The assumptions made uh, in the cavity model are uh, first, that only the Z component of the electric field exists in the cavity region and is dependent of the Z coordinate of all uh, and is independent of the Z coordinate of all frequencies of interest. This assumption is actually based on the fact that H is much, much less, is very small uh, relative to the wavelengths. The second assumption is that the cavity walls are perfect magnetic conductor, as I mentioned before. Now, uh, given those assumptions, we can go to the uh, wave equation, uh, which can be derived from Maxwell equation, which is given here for EZ, and J is the current uh, exciting this cavity, and we actually can represent the solution of this differential equation by a superposition of all the modes that can exist in the cavity domain. Those are actually the eigenfunctions in the cavity mode, in the cavity uh, domain. And finally, we obtain the final expression of the electric field inside the cavity model by this uh, summation, superposition of all those modes. What we see here actually some typical uh, modes that can propagate inside the cavity uh, that exist in this uh, cavity resonator like TM10 in which uh, we obtain on this edge of the cavity constant electric field and on those two edges opposite distribution as we can note here and for the TM01 uh, the picture is actually uh, reversed such that on this wall we obtain a constant electric field and on those, those two sides uh, we obtain a variation of the electric field from uh, negative to uh, or minimum to maximum. This is important to understand, to under, uh, the and physical understanding of this uh, physical uh, distribution of those modes is important if we want to use the microstrip antenna beyond its um, dominant or lowest uh, resonant uh, frequency and be able to use it for application like uh, uh, obtaining uh, 
some other type of uh, radiation patterns uh, and not the uh, most simple one uh, which is obtained for the dominant mode. Here we see actually what happens to this patch antenna at three frequencies, uh, at um, 3 gigahertz, 6 and 9 gigahertz. What at those three frequencies we obtain actually different type of modes that propagate, in, that exist in the resonant cavity of the patch, such that for the lowest uh, frequency, 3 gigahertz, you obtain uh, those two, we can identify actually those two radiating slots uh, that uh, I mentioned before on the uh, edges of the patch. Now, as we go higher in frequency, we obtain, in addition to those two radiating slots, additional radiation from the other edges of the patch. And if we go to the highest frequency, 9 gigahertz, we obtain even a finer, uh, a, a finer distribution of the uh, electric field on the edges, and all that contributes to the uh, radiation pattern. This is actually can be uh, actually uh, represented or uh, translated. This is actually translated to the radiation pattern of each of those modes, such that for the dominant mode, we obtain this radiation pattern, which we have seen before, while for this um, uh, mode, we obtain uh, some sort of uh, a null in the, uh, in the direction or on the axis normal to the patch, and this is uh, due to the fact that the radiating, those two radiating slots are not anymore combined, don't combine in phase, but are reversed in phase, and therefore we obtain a null uh, on this normal, uh, normal to the phase of the microstrip. And for uh, the higher frequency, this is the equivalent uh, radiation pattern which, can, uh, uh, which is obtained. Uh, so, we, what we can see here, actually, that if we excite the patch in different type of modes, we can obtain from the microstrip antenna different type of radiation pattern. So, in some application, this is very important. So, now let's talk about the computation of the impedance of the uh, patch antenna uh, for uh, using the cavity model. In order to do that, we actually integrate uh, the electric field in, uh, uh, excited in the cavity domain uh, and uh, we obtain actually the projection of the electric field over the excitation uh, of the feeding point and if we integrate all those uh, modes over the current distribution, we obtain the total injected power in the cavity domain and if we uh, divide this quantity by I square, we obtain the input uh, complex impedance of the antenna. And this is actually a formulation which gives uh, the total uh, input impedance. As we can see, it is proportional to the superposition of all the modes uh, that uh, can uh, that are existing in the cavity domain. Some of them are propagating and some of them are evanescent, they are just contribute to the reactive part of the complex impedance. What we see here is actually a Smith chart with uh, some plots of the complex impedance for different location of the feeding point, like uh, close to the center, uh, in which we actually have this kind of uh, impedance, which uh, is very close to, the, to being either short, uh, because uh, if we remember, the closer we get to the center of the patch, we get a lower uh, complex impedance. And uh, for instance, for this point, which rep is represented here, we obtain optimal uh, matching, and uh, we obtain uh, uh, actually, we can see here actually both the complex, uh, both the reactive and uh, the real part of the impedance. And of course, as we go uh, to a, a feeding point closer to the edge, we obtain this kind of uh, a impedance uh, distribution uh, or a, a impedance uh, uh, dependence on frequency.